morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of How Did You Show. Today, we are recording an episode number 18. I can't quite believe that we are on number 18 now. And the episode is on the very, very popular topic, which is a rent-to-rent, especially a rent-to-HMO. And uh, who is going to be with me on today at uh, teaching you about this strategy is a fantastic um, Giuseppe Leone. Hi, Giuseppe. Welcome to the show. Sorry. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. How are you, Lance? Good morning. <laughs> Thank you. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very excited to do this podcast. It's my first one. Oh, and uh, oh, really, no. really cool stuff. I'm popping your I'm popping your podcast cherry today, yeah? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, well, thank you very amazing. much for uh, coming on the show today. Um, just for Thanks for inviting me. I'm, I'm going to let you introduce yourself properly. I just want to say that Giuseppe is an expert within the rent to rent uh, uh, strategy as, as well as BRR, which is the buy um, ref, uh, ref, uh, refer refinance. Um, and he's also won an award uh, in 2015, a property award, which is, was the highlight of his uh, um, um, intra- entrepreneur's, property entrepreneur's career. So I'm sure that he's got a lot to offer and I'm sure that everybody's going to learn a lot from you today. So thank you again for coming on the show. And can you tell us a bit more you. about you for those who don't know you? Yes. Yeah, so good morning, everyone. My name is Giuseppe Leone and uh, I live in Bristol. And I'm from Bristol, as you can tell from my accent. No, I'm joking. <laughs> and uh, so clearly Italian. I was born in Milano, where I grew up. And um, I started my professional career working for an oil company, Shell International, and I worked for them for 17 years. However, in 2014, while I was still working for them, I want to change my career path because I want to create a legacy for my kids, if they behave. And, um, and so, and when I was a kid, I always want to be an architect. So I always had uh, the, the property bug in my system. And uh, then eventually I studied business and economics, but I kept my passion for property. So in 2014, while I was still working for Shell, I started looking around and I bumped into property investment. And uh, at that time, I didn't have uh, a lot of cash available. So I was looking for a strategy that could give me cash flow, and, uh, but didn't require a lot of uh, upfront investment. And that's where, when I bumped into rent to rent. To be honest, at that time, I didn't have any clue about what rent to rent was. But uh, I read a lot, you know, now with the internet, you can read a lot of stuff. And then, um, to be honest, I was a little bit scared. Skeptical. I remember telling my wife, Gilde, my English wife, saying, well, I found this uh, strategy sounds a little bit too good to be true, but let's further investigate. So I signed up for a two-day course. I went to this course completely open-minded, as I usually do. And um, when I come back home, I told Gilde, well, actually, it's as good as it's so. Yeah. So I think we found a strategy to change our life. And that's how we start. Wow. Okay. And yeah, and that was uh, six years ago. Uh, cutting a long story short, seven years later, now in 2016, my wife managed to change her career path. So she left her corporate job as well. And she started working our business full time. And one year later, in July 2017, I did the same. So since 2017, we are both working full time. And uh, we built a large portfolio of rent to rent HMO here in Bristol. But we also, as you said, I'm also specialized in BRR. So buy a dilapidated house, usually refurbish that heavily. So I force appreciation into it and then refinance it so I can recycle my cash and start again. And that's the way I did it. And I built my portfolio in the last seven years. I've not finished yet that journey, but uh, according to my Excel spreadsheet, by July this year, I should have finished my journey. So... So yeah, it's taken seven years to get where I want to get. A uh, couple of years later than my original plan, but you know, life is busy, uh, kids, businesses, and so on. And so on. I think changing your life completely over seven years is, I'm, I'm pleased about my achievement. 
That's amazing and very, very um, inspiring and fascinating as well. So you both, you're both in the property, you're both working on your business. Um, so is that like two different businesses like a rent to rent and your uh, BRR? Um, is, is that correct? So you have two different businesses you're both working on. Yeah. Yeah. So we, in fact, we've got three businesses. So we've got a company that manages our rent to rent business and that is Man, uh, mainly managed by Jilly, my wife, and we've got an employee. And, um, and then I'm in charge of the other business, which is acquiring uh, assets. As I said, usually that there shall be three bedroom houses and we turn with a, you know, a t typical orange carpet and pink uh, toilet seat, which I love. And, uh, and then I turn them into almost luxurious. Uh, high bedroom which was with two, three or four bathrooms, it depends on the layout of the house. And, um, and so I take care of that bit there. And then once the house is ready, I pass it over to Gilly and my employees so that they can manage it and they can rent it out. Um, and then I'm also, since last year, I'm also teaching people on how to build their rent to rent uh, portfolio. So mere what I've done of doing it even better. Because uh, I truly believe if, if I manage to make it, you know, with this, strange accent being a foreigner two kids busy life and so on everyone can do it i'm not a genius i'm just driven and that's it and um so that's the, our third business that's very exactly what you just said uh with everything you have going on you started with a full-time job you have children as well you that's not your first language because obviously your first language is italian yeah. you live in different countries yeah. Um, that's incredibly fascinating. Plus, you were be you you've been in a different industry before for a very long time. Um, so yeah, absolutely, very very inspiring. And uh, um, yeah, so so that's well done, well done to you. <laughs> I'd say. Thank you so much. But, but as I say, it's, it's nothing uh, complicated. You just need to be very resilient and uh, driven. And uh, in fact, one of the books I'm uh, reading now is called The Art of Resilience. And it's one of my favorite books because it teaches you never give up. And if you talk with my two kids, they are two boys, age 10 and 8, they ask, they ask what, which is that sentence that daddy tells me all the time is never give up. And uh, I truly believe it. And um, especially, you know, in this environment now with the lockdown number three, school closed, kids at home, homeschooling, business, and so on. It's very easy to say, oh, you know what? Let's, let's give up. Let's watch Tally 24-7 and eat junk food and so on. But I don't think that's the right attitude. You just go through it and, um, and find a way to, to, to sell the storm. And, um, and at the end, you will get all the benefits. So it's not easy, but it's not impossible. Absolutely, 100%. And as you said, you just have to, it's, the, it's to having the right mindset. It's very, very important, the right attitude. And uh, especially in the, play, in, the, in the industry like this one, which is a property, um, listening to um, other property entrepreneurs and you know, following their journey, every single person will tell you that it takes longer than you originally think. When you're starting, you, you think it's going to be, uh, the road's going to go nicely like that. But in, in, yeah. in reality, the road goes like this. And many or people it. give up in the beginning or they give up after the first month or two or year uh, because they, 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 they realize that it's not as easy and as fast as they thought, but, or maybe as fast because it gets easier, obviously, and we have experience. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's all about the, the right mindset and just, as you said, never give up. If you truly believe that that's what you want to do, if you truly believe in your goals, then you don't give up, of course. Absolutely, so absolutely. And, uh, and also... <laughs> yeah, correct, correct. And it's very important also to plan it. I'm very uh, hot on planning. So I've got my plans for one year to three years and so on. But every three months, I review my plans. Because as you said, it's not going to be going from A to B in a straight line. You zigzag. As long as you go that direction towards your end goal, it's fine. But uh, yeah. And, um, you know, one of my uh, first mentors told me in a in the world of properties, you will have, uh, as an average, 40 days, which are going to be your really bad days. And uh, when one of those happens, just put in your head and say, well, it's one of those 40s. The next couple of days will get better in the next couple of weeks, and then you move on. You know that out of 365 days, you will have 40 bad days. And, um, 
and that's the the, ment the mindset you need to have. Uh, is it easy? No, I I'm very honest. There are days when I say, you know what? Why did I do that? I was traveling the world with Shell, you know, five stars hotel stuff like that. Why did I put myself in this? But uh, you know, as long as you believe in your end goal, which I truly believe in my end goal, Absolutely. it's worth going through the pain at one point. Absolutely. And um, even if sometimes looking at the post office and get a job there is sounds quite attractive or relaxing. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it's not, it's not how anyway. you your freedom, isn't it? So being an entrepreneur, it's not for everybody. Of course, we do need people who, who, who want to be employed, people who, who wants to be managers. Uh, some people, they genuinely really like being, for example, um, a manager or, or they, they like the fact that the boss gives them pat on their back and they receive appraisals and they receive bonuses and things like that. So when you're an entrepreneur, when you are your own boss, you don't have that. You need to, you yep. are, you are your own boss. You are the only one who can tap yourself back and all that. So some people are not, you know, not designed to do this. However, in our world, because this is obviously a podcast for property entrepreneurs. So we are all, all, you know, we have a similar mindset. And when you're in this mindset, you need to, you, you just, you just have to, um, you, you, you understand that, um, that you're chasing that freedom, which um, is outside of that security of a job, because even if you were like 17 years working for Shell, you never know what can happen. The security Absolutely. is not there. The security is not yeah. there. So, and especially, you know, now in, uh, in this pandemic, there are no secure jobs. No. Per se. You can be whoever in any, in any employment status. You can lose your job, not because of your fault. Because, you know, there is, for example, now there is a pandemic and that's the way it is. And, uh, but I'm one of the guys that I don't regret my previous life. I truly, truly loved working for Shell mm -hmm. and uh, for this big corporation. So a lot of people, you know, say corporate is, uh, is devil or rubbish and so on. I fully disagree. I think I managed to become an entrepreneur thanks to what I've learned in the first 17 years in Shell. They taught me how to be professional. Uh, compliance and all this kind of stuff and um, and thanks to those skills I transfer the skills now in my company even you know even to the lowest level we did, with my employee we are uh, writing now all the operating procedures so when if she leaves our team I can give the operating procedure to the next person and this person can read it with uh, you know um, screenshot and so on, I can execute the jobs. So these are all the skills that I learned when I was in Shell, but <clears throat> they can be very useful also now in my own company. So, um, so yeah, I think ideally people should do the two things, you should start in a, in a corporation where you really learn how to be a professional. And then okay. if they want to do it, put themselves completely out of the comfort zone, set up their own company if they've got the vision or break all or something. But uh, there is nothing wrong with working all their life for a, no? for a company. It's, my dad did that. He had a great time. He allowed us to live a great life and um, that, that's absolutely fine. So, absolutely. Like that's exactly like, um, it's just not for us. And this is, as I said, you and I are talking here and we, this podcast, it's for uh, people who want to be entrepreneurs or who wants to be in the property world. So um, it's just not for us. But it's nothing wrong with it. Of course, it's not. Um, and 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 it's uh, as as we said that we it can't be that we would be all same. That it's it the world would not ex, you know the world would not function if all of us we just want to be exactly. business exactly. owners and entrepreneurs who would actually do this, exactly. you know, this works. So it's like yeah, exactly. and yeah. So definitely. And um, I know exactly what you mean when it comes to. Um, um, the um the learning from your previous jobs so uh, obviously this podcast is about you but just like very quickly uh, just to give an example is that i've been working yeah. in the past i have experienced a long many many years in hospitality and i worked in a really nice restaurants um really nice and posh restaurants and obviously that taught you a lot of 
elegant service and the extra miles you go, you know, with, uh, uh, with, you know, with, uh, with, with people, with your, with your um, clients and your guests and, and, um, and then um, being a manager at the same time, combination of these two and having entrepreneurs mindset, I am a, in an SA business and uh, yeah. that is completely transparent amazingly because SA, so, so sorry, service accommodation for those who don't know, service accommodation, it's not just a strategy, it's a business and it's <coughs> hospitality business. So hospitality uh, skills transferred from my previous experience now are invaluable. So I know exactly what you mean is that you can learn so much from your previous job and then apply that to your business that, yeah, it's, it's very, it's, it's good. <laughs> it's very important. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and back to what you said that you don't have a boss being an entrepreneur, you are your own boss. The, one of the tips I would like to share is it's really easy to always put yourself as a, you know, the entrepreneur, the, the founder of the company under uh, pressure because, uh, you know, you achieve something great. For example, you've done a great refurbishment and then there is always the next project. But I think one of the tips I want to share, and I'm quite guilty here because I don't do it all the time, to be honest, I need to do much better than that, is once you have achieved something amazing, just stop and celebrate, yeah? Go out with well, your think, wife, yeah. husband, boyfriend, somebody, go out for a meal, uh, go away for a weekend, but just stop and sink that in. And uh, otherwise, we are like an hamster on the wheel. We keep spinning, spinning, spinning. <laughs> and, uh, and then eventually, if you don't stop, you burn out. And um, you see a lot of entrepreneurs, they burn out because of that. And uh, so, as I say, I'm quite guilty. I don't do it as much as I should be doing. But uh, I'm, I'm changing more and more, and I'm doing more and more. Now, so. At least, you know, the thing is yeah. that I can see that you are aware of it, and you want to work yeah. with that. Some people, they, they, they don't even care about it, or they don't even, you know, they know, but they don't, they don't, they, they ignore it. And that's why, as you said, they burn. But watching others' mm -hmm. journeys mm -hmm. and learning from others' mistakes is also very important. So, um, as you said, like, mm -hmm. I, I'm guilty as well sometimes that I could be, I could easily be going seven days a week sometimes. And there are moments where my boyfriend or my friend will be like, no, we're going for a walk today or Sunday, for example. And don't get me wrong, like, I love my walks and I do have lots of hobbies. I have a lot of hobbies. Um, but they are times where I have to really like, yeah, you are right. It is, let's take a day off and close the laptop and exactly. go. Yeah. And exactly. It's exactly. Uh, important. Yeah. And as you said, it's important to look uh, how other people do it. And that's why one of my favorite books are always the biography of uh, successful people. Like one of the latest uh, books I read was uh, Agassi biography. And, uh, you know, you learn from the mistakes of the others, yeah? yeah. And, uh, and also you get some tips from what the other people do. So uh, I remember Jilly's ex-boss, the two boss before she left, uh, he at one point was pretty young in his 40s. He had a stroke because he was just working 24 seven with three mobile phones all the time. And um, fortunately he survived, he recovered and so on. After that he said, you know what? I've got now a routine, I check my mails, twice a day is from this time to that time, everything else, I stop it. I'm not 24 seven, otherwise I get another stroke. And the first time I was lucky, the second time I might not be that lucky. So um, exactly. these are all uh, the, the tricks. I, I tend to take out the stress from my life doing sport. So I sweat it out basically. And, um, but uh, not early in the morning. I'm not one of these 5 a.m. club. I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> I'm an hour. I, uh, <laughs> and at 5 o'clock in the morning is the only moment when I'm not stressed. <laughs> so there's no point in doing sport. So I tend to do it at the end of the day. So after any test, I go out. And I just sweat it out. That's my, my you know, this, the, the saying, the Latin say, men's son, corporate son. If you've got a fit body, your health, your mental health is, is good. And now, you, you perform much mind. better. <laughs> exactly, important. exactly. Yeah. It's really important. Exactly. And again, you need discipline because as an entrepreneur, you can work 24-7. So you need to say, okay, it's five o'clock. Whatever I got it, I stop, I go for a run, for a cycle, and, and then I come back, I shower, and, uh, and I'm much more productive. Nice. So, um, well done.
well done. Yeah. <laughs> it is so yeah. important. Yeah, it is very important to have a like, strong, strong mindset and just be very disciplined with your time and, and all that, as you said. You're already giving a very, very invaluable tips. <laughs> so, yeah, brilliant. Uh, I hope so. Yeah. So, now let's just yes. go to the, the main question of the podcast now. So, you told yeah. us how you got into property, how you found out about the properties, and you know, how you opened the business with your wife and all that, which is very, very, very fascinating. And then, uh, and, and inspiring that's the that's the main word um but now obviously we we picked up for this episode we picked up the your strategy rent to rent and obviously as you said you have an hmos so can you tell us a little bit more so how did you for those beginners out there because obviously this this podcast is mainly for the beginners but not only um but just just yeah. to give a tip so how did you get your first hmo and how did you scale like what what have you learned like can you tell us a bit more about that please yes so, um, as I said at the beginning, I was looking for a strategy that allowed me to create cash flow in order to replace my corporate salary, the salary from Shell, and um, without having a big amount of money available, and uh, either myself or through other people. So, what I love about rent to rent in a nutshell means that you rent a house from a landlord, and then with his permission, you re rent it to shares. That's in a nutshell what it is. Uh, rent to rent is a great strategy, but the, the thing I want to make clear from the beginning is it's a quite gray area at the moment. So you need to execute it as a proper business and you need to be 150%, not even 100%, 150% compliance. So you need to make sure you use the right contracts, you execute this, the right processes, for example, you, you protect the deposit within 30 days and things like that. Because if you don't do it, uh, professional compliance and so on, you risk to put the life of your tenants at risk, the assets of your lender at risk, your own career and life at risk. Because I've seen people, I've read people of people that uh, have then ended up in, uh, in jail. Okay, and uh, so you really don't want to do that. And um, how did I get into rent to rent? As I said, I did a, a, I, I truly believe in a education. We, nobody uh, is born already without the information. Go to somebody who has done it, who is doing it every day, and learn from the best if you can. Because then it's not only the day to day process, but it's also the tricks, the tips on how to overcome problems. And um, so I did this two days course, and then uh, I did a 12 months mentoring. And uh, how did I get my first one? So one way to find uh, rent to rent uh, properties, sending letters to uh, landlords who have got license HMO. So if you've got a license HMO in England, your information as a landlord, your residential address, is in a register which is publicly available. Sometimes the uh, council make you pay for receiving that reg register, but you can get rid you can get that register with all the information. So can I, I sent uh, in two thousand four. One second, just because this is uh, yeah. just to add add to it. Um, you, what you're saying for those out there, what you're saying, it's completely true. But what I've learned is that in a council where I live, so I live in Devon, and one of the councils here is um, they um, they didn't want to let give it to me not even by payment so okay. and i was fighting for months and months and months uh with a like a law language um you you know help help of my lawyer friend saying that this is as freedom information as you just said it's a freedom of information yeah. and they were fighting against it they said no no we can't give you that we can't give you that and after a few months they send it to me so yeah just just to put it out there that if they will try to do that and they and the council say no they can't do that this is a freedom of information as yeah, and to be fair, it's getting harder and harder to get uh, their hands on this uh, register. And, and I also kind of understand why, because, you know, a lot of people flood these poor lenders with a lot of information letters and so on. So I understand that. But yeah, it, it's a marketing strategy. So basically, I got this, this register. I sent uh, roughly 800 letters out. Mm -hmm. And out of those 800 letters, I received uh, three answers. So two of them said, please don't send me another letter anymore. Take me out of your, <laughs> of your register, please. And uh, 
exactly. And uh, uh, but the third one was a guy who is a young lender with a big uh, um, uh, portfolio here in Bristol, really an inspiring young guy. And um, he used to rent uh, all his property when uh, I contacted him to the council. And uh, he's, he was at the point where he wanted to change it. He, had, he didn't have any bad experience, to be honest, with the council. But he said, I want to give it to more professional and so on. So I, I was lucky to send him that letter at the right moment of his life. So we met and then we got, uh, I got my first free rent rent. And uh, so that's, that's the way. So in terms of uh, percentage, obviously, my marketing campaign, I had a really better result because, you know, three answers out of 800 is what? 0.01% whatever it is. It's real. By the end of the day, I got three properties. So in actual money, it was worth doing it, obviously. And, um, and out of those three, I'm, I bought, I purchased two of them eventually, one last year, one two, two weeks ago. And, uh, and now I'm oh. refurbishing them. Did you get them on like a lease option then? Uh, at that time, I didn't know about lease option, so I didn't, unfortunately. But I still got them uh, on a good price. Uh, not extremely below market value, but slightly below market value. But for me, is you know, I've been managing those property for five, six years, so I know exactly what they can give me. And now that I'm changing the layout, adding another bathroom, another bedroom, and so on, I know even how much more I can make in terms of cash flow and so on. So, I'm, um, I'm happy with that. So I didn't do it in a very sophisticated way, like in this option, which is the right way to do it, because I didn't know about that at that time. But um, still, I got to a new, new property in my, in my portfolio, which is very good. And that's what I love about rent to rent, because it gives you, you know, cash flow, and potentially can give you also asset generating um, uh, stuff. So you, you can add, you can add. Uh, uh, strategy on the same strategy and so on. So um, yeah, no, I lo I love rent to rent, and usually when I choose a, um, a strategy, I attach a specific goal to the strategy to the different time of my life. So, for example, as I mentioned several times, at the beginning I chose rent to rent because I wanted the rent to rent to produce a cash flow that could replace my uh, salary in share because I, when I moved to full-time uh, investor. I didn't want to see any difference in my bank account. Uh, the only difference was uh, the money instead of coming from Shell International was coming from my own company, but the amount was pretty much the same. So I didn't need to adjust my my private life uh, or my life, uh, way of living uh, when I went full-time. Uh, then phase two, which is the one that will finish in July, I'm uh, using the rent rent money also to uh, allow me to purchase new properties so that I could I can buy I can build my own portfolio and uh, and then phase three which will be from next year I will not need the cash flow from rent to rent to fuel my life so because that will be given by my own portfolio that I will have built by then and then I will use that money to pay down my um, mortgages on my own portfolio and uh, uh, because obviously the, the goal final goal is to have a portfolio without any any mortgage and then when that happens I will be at last free to go skiing six months a year and surfing and selling the other six months a year <laughs> that's it <laughs> so I can see the famous passive income that at the moment is not very positive no, it's, and, uh, yeah. That's the, that's the thing. That's another thing about the property, isn't it? That loads of people get missold the dream that property is passive income and uh, you invest money and then you're just seeing money rolling into your account. And uh, that is not true, at least not in the beginning. Um, and not for everybody. I mean, it's, it, it, that, you know, property can be passive income. Uh, don't get me wrong. Those, those who's listening. Yeah. The beginners property can be passive income, but let's just not, Let's just don't be too naive, especially when you're starting out, because it, it, it involves a lot of work. Even when you have, let's say, property manager. So let's say you have a, a portfolio of rent to rent, for example. And even if you have a property manager, yeah. you still have to look after that manager. There's still something involved in there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, so to have a property. Absolutely. Takes, takes little time. 
Yeah, correct. But what is true, it will never be 100% passive because you want always to keep an eye on whoever is managing it for you. But what I love about Property War is it gives you the flexibility to work from where and when you want because now there is technology. Yeah, so I can I can manage my business from my mobile phone here. Yeah, I've got all the apps to do that. So as long as I've got uh, an internet connection, I can do it. I remember a few years ago I was in uh, Disneyland in Orlando, in Florida, with Jill and the kids, and uh, through WhatsApp we rented two properties there. Yeah, okay. So I was still there during the breaks. I was working a little bit and. Uh, uh, I signed two deals through through a WhatsApp, which was even free. So, so uh, that's what I love. I don't need to go to an office nine to five, but um, I can work when and how I want. So, and my real goal is, and I'd say it really honestly, I don't care if I've got a Ferrari parked outside there. Obviously, if I've got it, I'm not going to cry. But that's not my goal. This is not my why. My why is every time the school is closed, I want to spend quality time with my kids, my wife, my friends, yeah. traveling or meeting people and so on, all the stuff that the last four months we have not been able to do thanks to this beautiful COVID. And, uh, <laughs> but that's the thing is, you know, just travel, enjoy the, the rest of the life and the result of your hard work. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, at the beginning, it's really hard work doing a full-time job and then setting up your business and so on. Absolutely. It was not easy. And... Um, but it's worse eventually. Amazing. So now you, exactly, 100%. So you, um, you explain how you got your uh, first, so you obviously started with the um, direct to vendor marketing, uh, yep. which, um, yeah, it's also, it's very, very popular, <laughs> very popular, and it does work most of the time. To be fair, I have to be honest, it didn't really work for me. I had a one, I had a three, no, yeah, three or four replies as well, sending, 500 letters and uh, same like you um, all of them apart from one was please don't uh, please don't contact me again and one <laughs> was yes, basically but that person at the same time received a letter from other two and their offer was slightly better so it's not uh, but that it's I don't hear stories like mine that often most of the time people at least get one property from it so yeah. like, I don't want to scare those beginners out there you know keep trying because you don't have to have a necessary like yeah. stories like yours and then you've got stories like mine so direct to vendor can work definitely but not necessarily have to but it depends on where you are or how at what time the timing of when you're contacting those landlords as well no so yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Uh, and the, the time is really the important one. So the important, if you do direct to vendor, you need to keep doing it every two, three months over one or two years. So because you never know the situation of the lender. I remember a few years ago, I received a call from my unknown number. And this gentleman say, are you Giuseppe from Lionel Properties? And say, yes. Are you still in business? I say, yeah, very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. And they say, well, two years ago, you sent me a letter uh, saying that you want to, to manage my property or to purchase my property. And I was very honest. I said, very luckily, I'm real sorry, I can't remember your name, but yeah, I sent a lot of letters. And uh, it, it really shocked me in a positive way. I say, well, when you sent me the letter, that impressed me, but it was not the right moment for me. Now it is because I finished work, uh, my career, I'm a pensioner, I want to travel the world, I need somebody to take care of my assets. Can we meet up? So you never know how That's those amazing. letters. Uh, I was I amazed that people you keep a letter for two years. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, it's, um, so uh, you need to keep back to what we said, resilience, never give up. You need to keep doing stuff on a regular basis. And then if you hit somebody the right time, the right moment, uh, with the right offer, you will have a deal. But um, you just, you just, yeah, uh, you just um, um, kind of like kicked my backside as well. That uh, soon I'm going yeah. to send another campaign out because I haven't received a, a reply yet. That doesn't mean that, as you said, it's the timing which matters. So yeah, definitely. So. So you, you, you told us how you got your properties and how you, 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 you first. So can I ask, um, so have you, when you got your properties then, they've been licensed HMOs, which means that you had, um, um, they, they were tenanted already? 
when you got when you got them? No. Uh, yeah, they, they were talented, but I got them uh, when I do a deal with my lender. I always want the house to be empty from my ten from their tenants because I want to use my own. I want to have my own tenants. I want to have my own style in my house. So usually, you have to do that. Well, we 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 plan it in advance. And we say when the tenancy with the current tenants finish and you manage to get them out, that's when, when I, I step in. So I want to sign the contract once the house is completely empty. And, um, and the, the main reason is because we specialize in, uh, we've got some niche markets. So for example, we specialize in a lot of uh, um, international um, national professional because between me and my wife can speak several languages so we tend to uh, to talk with these uh, tenants in their own language in Italian in French in Spanish and so on and um, so I love having very international ho uh, houses because that's the way we live I live in a very international community probably because I'm Italian and Jill is English and most of our friends uh, I've got at least two or three languages in their family. So that's what I love. And that's where we are good. We understand really the, you know, also the uh, difference between cultures. So we tend to put together uh, tenants with the same background. So you put together, you know, Mediterranean tenants. And you don't mix uh, somebody from Italy with somebody from maybe the North Europe because they live a different life. It doesn't mean that one is wrong, one is right. They're just different. And yeah. if you put them together, you might have a clash. So, um, and that's, a, it's really interesting to put the, you know, pieces of a puzzle together and create a nice environment yeah. in the house. And uh, so they're cool houses, very, oh. very international, I love them. How do you look and, uh, if I can ask? Uh, How do you I find them, I find them mainly on uh, Facebook. So there are Facebook groups uh, by nationality. So for example, if you are in Bristol, there are several uh, uh, groups like Italians in Bristol, oh, Italian who loves Bristol, blah, blah, blah. And so we, <clears throat> we tend to post there in the language of that group. So if it's in the Italian group, we write in Italian. If it's French one, we write in French. And, um, and you know, and, gi and this gives a lot of uh, reassurance if somebody's from Italy is moving to Bristol, never been there. And the fact that he, he or she can speak the, the mother tongue language with somebody, you feel a little bit, you know, uh, a little bit more secure, and uh, you feel a little bit more comfortable. Even when you read the contract, maybe their English is not very good at that point. You can explain it. Amazing. The risk is sometimes you you tend to adopt your tenants, which is what my wife tend to do sometimes. <laughs> and so we need to to draw a line and say, well, <laughs> it's a little bit too much now. <laughs> We've already got two kids. It's more than enough. <laughs> And, uh, but you know, that, that, that's the way we set up our business. That's where we built our business. And, um, for me in rent to rent, but in every strategy, the key, another learning, another tip I would like to go to give is choose a niche market where you are unique from the competition or as unique as you can from the competition and try to specialize in that. Because if you are in a, you know, if you are an average, uh, the competition is very, very hard because there are a lot of people doing that. Yeah? If you give uh, a niche product, a different product for us, we speak Italian, French, blah, 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 it's, uh, you differentiate from others. So it's easier to, to win that piece of business because it, you're giving a unique product. And um, so it's really, really important you find your own niche and just build your business on that. That's, that's one of my favorite tips to give. Fantastic. Amazing. Thank you so much for that. And Giuseppe, can I just also ask for, so how do you, yeah. do you, you, you said that you're running your businesses on your WhatsApp. Is that, do you have a, uh, any, yeah. any programs or any, um, any apps, any systems which you would recommend people to use in order to be more organized with Absolute. it? Not to get overwhelmed and... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we use a CRM system called Podio, and it's basically um, a system where you can really map your own process from, you know, from sourcing the house to, to finding a deal and uh, set up the house, finding the tenants, manage the tenants, manage the maintenance, and then uh, the tenants move out and the new one moves in and so on. And um, 
it's all very well mapped and connected. And, uh, you know, at the beginning, we used to run our business through an Excel spreadsheet, which it's absolutely fine. But uh, you, you might lose a lot of opportunities because what the CRM system do, one of the key features, they send you reminders. So if you do something like, for example, you call a letting agency for reviewing and they say, the lender is not happy now because he has got already mm. their own, um, uh, the family, they want to have a family now, but call me back in six months time. Well, you will very likely forget about that call in six months time. Through your CRM system, you will receive an email, an alert five months before, and then say, okay, call this LA letting agency. You will read everything you ever described, discussed those six months before, and you remember that. And especially if you got then a team, like if I work with Gilly and our employee, uh, I don't need to ask where we are on anything, even on a maintenance issue. I just go on the, on the app and I see that maintenance, I always find the latest information there. And the last bit that is the most important one, everything is on the cloud, as back to what I said at the beginning. You want to be flexible to work wherever you want. So if it's in the cloud, as long as you have got an internet connection, you can look at that. I could look at that in Florida or on my Alps or on a selling board. That's it. And so you don't want to have like papers on the back of your house uh, or your chair. Uh, you want everything on the cloud, so accessible everywhere. Day, no? so, when we're in digital world. Absolutely. 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 So, yeah, the, I, I would say, despite uh, I start with Excel and then move to a CRM system, if I had to do it again, I would implement my CRM system from day one. That's definitely really, really important. I would have missed much less opportunity, I believe. Oh, that's and a good I tip. really missed some. And did you, did you set Absolutely. up the audio yourself or did you get your professional to help you? No, I bought it like off shelf. So I got somebody professional to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you cannot be good in uh, everything. I'm not super okay. good in, in technology and so on. You know, the, the reason why I'm asking this question is because um, I try to set up audio for myself and I'm, yeah. I have to admit, I'm not that bad with technology. Like I mastered iMovie very quickly and YouTube and things like that. Like I'm pretty good with technology. Audio, I'm lost. No matter what I try, no matter how many videos I watch on YouTube, I cannot figure it out. So that's why I'm asking is like, you know, it's, it's probably worth investing up front a little bit, but get professional to set it up for you. And that's why I like your um, advice Absolutely. that someone like you who's been in a business for, for a while, and started with a, with a classic Excel spreadsheet, you would recommend to have Podio mm -hmm. or, I mean, CRM system from the start. So, yeah, for those beginners out there, Absolutely. take that on board, try, get a professional if, to help you if you don't know how to set it up yourself and, yeah, get it from the, from the start. That's important. And I, I'm learning this now. I need to get it yeah. by myself. So, <laughs> thank you for yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> we can have a session on that one together. And, uh, yeah, no, it's, it, I think that, that would have accelerate my my business uh, expansion a little bit to be honest so um, and the other system i use is um, an accountancy system called xero x e r o and uh, again you can uh, manage your accounts through an excel spreadsheet as i did at the beginning as usual but um, i wish i had done uh, i had implemented zero from day one because zero uh, gets all the feeds from bank account automatically every day, and then uh, you can reconcile it. Or, because it's very important to delegate one point, I got now a bookkeeper, and she goes into my zero account. She reconciles everything every every month, and then uh, at the end of the year, my account goes in, and they just run my tax return. Uh, but the, the the really good thing about zero is also the uh, reporting system behind that. So I'm uh, probably because of my background in finance and share, I check my business, the profit and loss and balance sheet of my business every month, if not more, uh, more, more often. And I run my profit and loss for the totality of my company, but also by property. So I can see exactly which property is giving me the right amount of money. And in zero, you can put your budget, so what you forecast for that company on a monthly basis, and then you have got your actual, so what you have really achieved 
a specific month. And then you have got the variance analysis, which is the difference between the two. Yeah. So you can uh, really understand if you have been in line with your budget, if you have uh, achieved more than what you were planning to do or if you underachieved. And for me, obviously, if I overachieve, I'm happy, mm. obviously. Okay. But for me, the key one, the key reason why I do it is I want to see if I underachieve, I want to understand why that happened. So is there like a one-off uh, situation? So I've got, a, you know, a, a, a repair and an unexpected repair that month, so which can happen. Or is there any underlying issue that if I not discovered immediately would have created a, a big loss for me over the, the, the year uh, in the future? So I another tip as an entrepreneur, in my opinion, is you need to be on top of your numbers really really in a very tight way on a monthly basis all the time because if something goes wrong you need to fix it immediately because otherwise if you discover it 12 months later you might have lost a lot of money and sometimes you cannot even recover that so um, well done. Uh, yeah that's, Good tip. that's another one fantastic well you're spreading your little tips all over the all over the episode i hope you can <laughs> your free top tips later <laughs> Amazing. yeah, yeah that's such a great golden nuggets definitely like uh, giuseppe you very um you 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 are very honored you are very professional you're very honored you are switched on um right. you are organized and uh what i also like is that you um uh, like admit that the certain things you, you you're doing it now, but you're not do, you have not been doing it in the beginning. And if you would start again with the knowledge you have, you would implement it from the start. So it's really good for those beginners out there. Absolutely. And, and as we yeah. said, uh, you you are for example, you said in the beginning that you really enjoy watching uh, watching list, um, reading uh, biographies of other successful people and you know and you're learning from other people's mistakes as well and that's what it is all about you 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 read it to inspire you and those people they don't tell you about their highs they also tell you about their lows and what you're doing now is a similar thing exactly that you 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 are you know you're sharing as well things like right i would this is what i'm doing now but i have not been doing in the beginning so those who are listening including myself implement things from the start <laughs> sooner better because obviously this is how we learn yeah. le- le- learning from others isn't it so that's really good Thank absolutely and, and and that's where that's what i try to you know because i've got my my teaching business where i try to teach people to to do the same and that's what i i teach from the beginning all the stuff that i wish i had done but have not and that they would accelerate your success and it would minimize your mistake. We are going to make mistakes. I'm still making mistakes now, seven years oh. later. It's part of the life. As long as you can minimize them, because mistakes in property most of the times means money. <laughs> so if yeah. if you can minimize it, you you reduce the amount of money you you lose or you spend for without needing to spend it. So of course, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, amazing yeah very, yeah very very good tips very good tips and uh, that's something well even not only in the business but also in your personal life you should be really on top of your finances and uh, even if it's just for classic oh, yeah. things about your bills and all that some people including myself until maybe a year and a half ago two years ago when you asked me how much uh, outgoings i have i would have to stay quiet for a little bit and then i'll say oh roughly that much and it's like, hold on a second, you're an adult and you don't know how much exactly going out. I mean, we're not talking about things like food, uh, which obviously depends on the day or a week. Uh, but we're talking about the ones you have to go out, like your bills and Netflix or uh, phone bills for, and things like that, that you really, yeah. everybody should know their, their, their financial situation and how they're doing and your expenditures and all that. So great tip great tip yeah definitely absolutely on top of your absolutely. finances <laughs> absolutely 100 percent. very important fantastic so giuseppe now can i just ask you now um as i said i absolutely love that you've been you've been spreading your tips all over the episodes this is how i love my episodes to be um for for, for those who's listening now can i ask you for your Top three tips. What would you recommend? What what did you learn? And what what would you say to those beginners out there? Top three tips from Giuseppe. So the three tips is keep learning because it's really important to be on top of it. Things change completely. The way I have to to run my business today is completely different 
where it was seven years ago. And just because, you know, legislation changes, environment changes and so on. So keep learning or reading. As I said several times, I read a lot of books. And for me, as long as I get one tip from that book, it was worth reading it. Or read, um, you know, I read the YPN magazine uh, just because you read what other people do. And there is always somebody who does something better than you do. And you don't need to reinvent the wheel. If somebody does something smart, let's try to emulate mirror that one if you can. And um, yeah. so that's the first one. The second one, as we mentioned earlier, be on top of your numbers. And uh, it's the reason why, uh, especially startups and small companies, go bus is cash flow. Uh, you know, they're saying cash is king. So be very, very strict with your numbers. Don't, even if you save five pounds, that sounds nothing. If you, you know, top up five pounds on five pounds at the end of the day, any drop makes a lake, we say in Italian. And uh, so you, you can really get yourself in trouble if you are not on top of that. And, um, and the last one is never give up. Uh, as I said during the, the last hour, it, it, it's going to be a bumpy ride. It's, it's as simple as that. You can sugarcoat the, the pill, but it's not going to be and is one, uh, not always, yeah? And so just make sure you've got the clear end result, could be a financial result or whatever result you want to have, and just keep marching towards that result. And uh, you will not go straight there in a straight line, it will be zigzag, it will be up and down the mountains, but uh, if you're on top of your numbers and you never give up, you will get there, so. Absolutely. Uh, but it's not easy. Don't think you get rich overnight because you will not. I'm I sorry to tell you that. Exactly. <laughs> I have there is you know how people send uh, make those little funny pictures on uh, social media, uh, which it's like a like a little cartoon pictures, and it just it's, yes, it's just showing a message. And there was a one yeah. about that particular this on this topic, and it says that. Um, when you start in a property business, you think like this is your goal, yeah, and you've got a beautiful road, goes to your goal, and there's a beautiful sunshine out, out there, you know, and, uh, and no unicorns and all that, and this is what you think that your journey is going to be. Yeah. And the next picture, Nick, next picture is this road, the goal is there, but you go this way, and this way, and that way, and then there's a hole, and there's a fire, and, <laughs> you know, and, and then the, the person, <coughs> it was like the funny way, that but the person who actually got to the end, it scratched and like tie it and do you know what I mean and it's like but that's the reality exactly. it's like you, the, the road that's the reality <laughs> yeah exactly exactly, exactly. but um, it's worth it if you really believe in that goal and that's if you really want to achieve that one you will make it uh, but um, I'd say yeah, you well, just need to be a reason I'd say as well is that uh, hold on let me just pull that down is that the other thing for the beginners out there is sorry i've got the extra bits there dream board it's very very important yeah. visualizing no visualizing your goals like if you some yeah. people like if you're not that good at writing your goals which also is really really important make them in a picture picture version and yeah print, print your board i mean print your pictures print print your future designed future um because definitely helps you with your mindset and will definitely Absolutely. help you to, 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 to stay focused and all that. So there's, 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 many ways, there's many ways how people can get, you know, keep inspiring and can get, you know, st st stay motivated. Um, so yeah. yeah. Very good. Um, thank you. Yeah, so agree. now um, no I have um, always asked my guest to, to recommend a book to read or listen to depends on what you do with your books <laughs> because these yeah. days we can listen to books which few years ago they yeah. were like what <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, so. yeah so i know that you like biographies so do you have any biography you would you would like to recommend i uh, i read uh, um several ones the one that i really loved was the one from uh, agassi and um and what i love about that is uh, first of all it tells you what we just said even if you see a very successful person, he might have gone through pretty difficult times. So Agassi, I didn't realize it, but he really hated playing tennis professionally. And despite it, he was an amazing, amazing tennis because he was put through a, a, you know, a program really, really tough. So before going to school, he had to hit 1,000 balls. Yeah? Mm. And because that was what his dad was his coach at the time, it was his way to make sure that uh, 
he was becoming a professional and and he became a professional in fact but he didn't uh, he didn't enjoy that but what also that book tells me is you need to be professional every single day and uh, so if you keep practicing you know as we said the rent to rent and so on there are processes there are businesses it's not just a strategy so it's just a matter of having the right process you keep doing it over day, day over after day after day, you refine it until you make it as perfect as you can be. And only doing it all the time, you succeed. And um, so that's what I love about uh, uh, that book. Amazing. Can you remind again the name again? What was the name again? Agassi Biography. Agassi Biography. Yeah, Agassi, the, Agassi. the tennis player. Ah, uh -huh, fantastic. Agassi, yeah. Thank you very much. Correct. Uh, that's that's a great no definition. And is that on Audible yeah. as well? Do you know, or you just read books? I'm old fashioned. I like the book in my hands and read it. And uh, because uh, if I listen to an audio book, I start to think about other stuff. Uh, while if I'm reading it, I concentrate. So that's the way my my mind works yeah. and so i like having uh, that book in my hands i'm a little bit old fashioned on that no that's brilliant you know what it's to me it's um i always wanted to be a big reader i read books or uh, every now and then like i have one now which is uh, i think i listened to you know when we spoke this week uh, it's from actually uh, coincidentally it's from a friend who is a property investor called tech um yeah. people know him under a brand called tech talks <laughs> and uh so yeah. I physically read and i have few books um i've read uh, but i'm a audible, audible person because to me I had to train myself to read like when I I'm opposite to you like you know when you said that when you listen to book you your mind goes elsewhere I had that with a physical book so I will be reading physical book and and I realize I'm thinking about something else and I go over and over the same sentence and then after half an hour I'm <laughs> and I'm like that's not where, where, working but I'm changing okay. <laughs> Because I love the idea of sitting down and reading a book and I'm practicing and I'm getting better. <laughs> ah, well done, well done. That's really good. And, and the good thing about audiobooks is, you know, even if you go for a run for a or bicycle or you're in the car, you can, uh, you can listen to it. So you can listen to stuff you are interested in. You can get educated and inspired and so on. So it's, um, yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, definitely. Brilliant. Um, and yeah. uh, there's another thing I always ask my, um, my guests and that is, um, uh, something, if you have something to recommend to watch, so that could be a movie documentary, whatever you want, and it could be mindset related or property related or anything you want, anything you would love to recommend to, to someone to watch, even if it's something fun, it doesn't matter. It's black hours, feel free. <laughs> Uh, what, what just watch it and say like guys watch this I like watching um, uh, documentaries on sport again especially uh, I would love to be a very good surfer I'm absolutely rubbish one but uh, I like watching the uh, uh, documentary on surfing because usually it's on a beautiful place on a beautiful beach I, I love uh, being on the beach and, uh, you need to uh, with Messi you and so Cornwall somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I come to Cornwall a lot, and uh, uh, I go usually to Devon and Cornwall and so on. And but I, I wish I could live in a place where I can be in my shorts and flip flops all the time with uh, 25 degrees. That's well, really what, Italian. what makes me feel good. Except, well, not even in Italy. I need to go more more extreme, probably. No, but, I mean, uh, like you are Italian. You got the Niño. Yeah, you to be on the absolutely. Sunny and hot. Absolutely, it's my Mediterranean genes inside me. So, so when I watch stuff like that, I, I get, I'm happy. You, if, you, if somebody had a camera on me, would see me smiling and so on. And uh, so that's that's the type of stuff that I tend to watch. Nice. And um, having said that, I don't have that much time to watch television, unfortunately. But um, what's the name anyway. of the um, the documentary with uh, Michael Jordan? Was that a uh, Last Dance? The, la the Last Dance. Yeah. yeah. I watched is that one that, as well. Is that that was interesting. Like, is that something your? That's what you like. Yeah. yeah. I watched that one as well. Uh, it was really interesting to understand how an NBA uh, team works. Uh, and, uh, I mean, he, I mean, he it was, built it. He built the NBA, didn't he? So, exactly. It was, it was really, really amazing. So, yeah, so those are the kind of stuff I watch. It's very rare I watch a comedy or I read about a comedy or a novel. 
uh, sometimes I do it, especially because Jill, my wife, much prefer that kind of stuff than my <laughs> silly sporty stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's my no, style. I quite understand why you like watching um, successful, like uh, or inspiring sport um, 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 documentaries, for example. It's because sport people are also like entrepreneurs. They are resilient. They 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 don't give up. So, you, you know, it's, it's fascinating and it's also with fitness and it's resilience and it's inspiring. Yeah, I completely get it. So yeah, fantastic advice. Thank Correct. you. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Advice. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, Giuseppe, this is, um, I, I absolutely love having you today on the show. I think, I think we covered most of the things I was, you know, we, we, we kind of like planned to, to, to talk about, but do you have anything uh, you would like to add? Or uh, the one thing you definitely need to tell us is also how to contact you if anybody wants to contact you or where to found you online, if you have online presence. So anything you want to add, uh, please feel free and also tell us where to find you for those who want to find you. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks. So first of all, I truly, truly enjoy this interview. As I said at the beginning, it's my first one and hopefully not the last one with, with you. It's, it has been really good fun. And, You're coming um, back. And, You're coming back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll come back. <laughs> and uh, no, it was really, really interesting. And I really hope some of my tips I shared are going to help somebody. So, um, yeah, so what I want to say is feel free to reach me out. Uh, I love trying to help people because, you know, my first mentor changed my life. And uh, I hope that I'm changing life of my students, my the people I talk with. So that's the way, my way to give back to the community. And um, so they, you can find me on social media, on Facebook, uh, on Instagram, even if I'm not very skilled on Instagram. I just opened an account a few months ago. So I'm learning a little bit, but <laughs> I'm getting there. And then obviously on LinkedIn, I'm over. I'm there as well, and, um, and yeah. And I hope. To, can you tell us how to find you? What is a Giuseppe Leone? It's like your name, yeah. Yeah. So it's Giuseppe Leone. So in Facebook, I've got a Facebook account called Giuseppe Leone, and then I've got also a page which is Giuseppe Leone Mentor, and on Instagram is, I think it's Giuseppe Leone Mentor, as well, and then. Um, and then on LinkedIn is, again, Giuseppe Leone. Or you can go through my website, which is www.liongateproperties.co.uk, which is the, my website for my training, for my asset creating business. Mm -hmm. Or you can go through my other website, which is www.myplaceinbristol.com, which is the, our brand to 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 manage our rent to rent and manage properties. So amazing. I'm I hope to hear you. with more, most of you. Pardon? I hope to talk with a lot of people and uh, yeah, don't be shy. Contact me out if I can help. Fantastic. I'm going to, on the video, I'm going to pop it on there so they can actually read it on the YouTube. And for the podcast, yeah. episode, I will, um, I mean, for the audio one, I will add it to the description. So as well. Yeah. So they can thank, thank you. you so much. Giuseppe, you so much. I truly, truly enjoyed this episode a lot, a lot, a lot. I had great fun. Me too. I had a lot of great tips and uh, I can't thank you enough for joining me today. And I'm sure that every single person who's going to listen to this podcast episode will learn a lot. So thank you so much. Yeah. Um, your journey is fascinating. Your, 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 your ethic and your, your work ethic and your, your mindset is truly amazing. So yeah, thank you for inspiring everybody around you. <laughs> thank you so much for inviting me. As I said, I really enjoy it. And I really hope I can help somebody with uh, this interview. So <laughs> thank you so much. And hopefully you will invite me back for another episode in the future. You are coming for BRRRR. <laughs> <laughs> we will. <laughs> definitely. definitely. So people, people keep, an, keep, keep your eyes open and your ears tuned. But Giuseppe will come back. <laughs> Excellent. Fantastic. I'll be back. Well, again, Excellent. thank you so much again. And have a fantastic thank rest so of the much. day. Thanks, Giuseppe. You, you are too. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. See you. Bye. Bye-bye. Um, I lost my thought. <laughs> <Yes. clears throat> Ready? <laughs> yeah.